Don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Just pop in the Flicksters podcast. You got it, Deval. You got, got it. Uh, listen, it so um, episode 228. Mm, 228. You know we're great. <laughs> There you go. So listen, folks, episode 228 is in your ears right now. Deval and I, we're going to be dropping some news, some film mm. reviews, some anniversary stuff, shout outs, you name it. We got it on the show. Keep it locked with us. And uh, remember, uh, watch us on YouTube, Deval. If people uh, like what they see, you can subscribe to us. Yep. Uh, you know, every little helps. On YouTube, you get to see us and hear us as well. So it might actually not be the best <laughs> thing. Now I'm thinking about it. No, I'm joking. <laughs> so some people are just meant to be heard, you know, not exactly. seen. I don't not know. But... Heard and not seen. All right, listen. Exactly. Uh, yeah, no, nah, we're not. Nah, listen, we, we, you can't, you, man, listen, look at us, man. We, we bring, we bring the love. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come Come on. on. Um, All right. Okay. Listen, Deval, let's get into the show and uh, take it away, man. Yeah. So, first of all, we've got a couple of shout outs. First one goes out to Zakharov. Thank you very much for, you know what? Zakharov does all our uh, stories on Instagram because we're we're just shit. So (laughs) So he puts out our stories and, you know, he helps promote the Flicksters, which is, you know, we are really grateful. Yeah. And we've been talking about it for so long. We almost did it a couple of times, but you're going to see Zakharov or you're going to hear him. (laughs) on the Flicksters very soon. I'm not sure what film it's going to be about, but Zachraff, you can hear us now because I know you're cooking your food. Exactly. Putting that spice, making Mate, it all come nice. on. That's right. Soon, we're going to put the spice of you in the show. <laughs> yeah? So, get ready, Zachraff. You're going to come on the show. Uh, come on, Zachraff, man. Out Make you. us go happy. Check his, go check out his page on Instagram. He's got lots of uh, good film suggestions as well. Uh, next shout-out goes to Ciel Noir 3. Our very own Ciel Noir 3, uh, chatting to her on Instagram. Go check out her page. Really, really great page. Positive vibes all the way through. Loves their movies. Yeah. Uh, saw At Man and the Wasp recently, said she loved it. And she said on Instagram, she's going to go check out our next episode. So hopefully, you know what? Maybe you're listening to us right now. Oh, if so. you are, give us a wave. Yeah. Oh, oh, that's it. Wherever you are. Wave oh, back. oh wave back. Let's wave back. <laughs> like, yeah. Uh, you go. No, thanks yeah. for that. Shout out to you two. All right, okay, let's get on to movie news, Deval. And listen, look, SAG Awards uh, just happened. And um, yep. I, I didn't know this, but they they streamed this on Netflix. Did they? Yes, they. I didn't know this. They streamed what? it on the Netflix YouTube channel. Oh, okay, okay, okay. That, okay, okay, all right. Yeah, and I then... Um, so, that, okay. yeah, so when that came out, I checked it out. I was watching it. Yeah, it was interesting. But, man, tell us about this. T- talk about everything, everywhere, all at awards. Everything, everywhere, all awards at once. That's what <laughs> happened. Uh, <laughs> True. Everything, everywhere, all at once sweeped the boards. I mean, we saw this film when it came out 2022. I think it was April. And it oh, came out, I think, of the year. before. Yeah, I think it came out before was it just after um, Multiverse of Madness? And at the time I saw this and said, this is the true multiversal film of the year. The film was crazy good, creative, different. It was just a breath of fresh air and amongst all the Hollywood, you know, cut and paste, copy and paste, uh, you know, rubbish that we're getting, to be honest. You know, we're just getting a lot of the same things, a lot of the same stories, just not really creative. And this was just great. So, you know, this basically, uh, I'm happy that this got awards and that yeah. people are able to see and uh, understand that this film is more than just a regular film. They should be awarded for their creativity. And for oh, their, man. Yeah, it's really good. Skills. Jamie Lee Curtis, she won. Yep. Michelle Yeoh, she won. Kei yep. Hu Kwan, he won as well. And then yep. it won the, mo- it, the, the, it was the final award of the night and um, Mark Wahlberg, he presented it. And it was mm. kind of the best ensemble movie yeah, or whatever. Cast, yeah, cast, cast yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. Big, big win for those guys. Um, do you reckon Michelle Yeoh could pinch the Oscar from uh, Kate Blanchett? Because she won, uh, she won the best actress, uh, the mm. best actor in a female uh, best. Act- yeah, she won it yeah. for the female um for the sag award i wonder mm. people are saying oh she could win it but a lot of people are saying it could be kind of 
mm. Michelle Yeoh could take it. I would like Michelle Yeoh to take it. I mean, mm. I, I've always been a fan of hers ever since the first time I saw her yeah. uh, in Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. From then, I was like, there was just something about her. She's mm. just, I don't know, just the way she carried herself on screen, the elegance of her fights and just everything from then. I was like, yeah, there's something about her. She was in Bond as well. I can't remember which Bond it was with Pierce Brosnan. Tomorrow Never Dies, I think. Tomorrow Never Dies. She was in that. She's been in Star Trek. She's been in a bunch of stuff. But I reckon, you know what? Not just because of this film, but also because of what she's done as a whole. I reckon oh, yeah. she deserves it. So, yeah, yeah oh, I'll, absolutely. I'll, I'll vote for her. Yeah. And if I you think haven't it... seen everything all at once, everything everywhere all at once, it's, I think it might still be on Amazon. I just thought I'd quickly mention that. So go and see it. Mm. Don't mess around. It's a it's a good film. Really good film. Yeah. So you were saying. No, no, I was going to... Uh, totally, no, no, no. Uh, uh, totally forgot it. But, um, you know, you're absolutely right. Yeah, it's on Amazon Prime. Go check it out. A great movie. Mm. Um, and, yeah, we'll see what happens, which is... Well, Oscars, I think, is what, in the next couple of weeks? Devour, is it? It's Find real me. soon, you know. It's actually real, real soon. I'm going to mm. find out for you right now. Yeah, Oscars. Yeah. So. Whilst you're doing that, I can quickly just start mentioning about... Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Remember Hellboy? We, we kind of reviewed Hellboy and David Harbour, who I think is a great actor, Deval. Uh, sorry, you were going to say? 13th of March, so real right. soon. 10 days, well, less than 10 real, days. Real soon, yep. Um, so, yeah, man, so Hellboy, I mean, we watched it. We were kind of a bit meh about the whole thing. Great to see David Harbour. He was, re, you know, they recast it because Ron, per- Ron Perman, he was the, you know, the original kind of Hellboy. But now, Deval, what's the news here? Yes, so there's a guy called Jack Kessie. Mm. Uh, so Jack Kessie is an actor. Uh, and well, obviously, obviously, he's an actor. Goes without saying. <laughs> Here's Jack Kessie. <laughs> so Jack Kessie, uh, he is an actor. He's, he's, he's known for Twelve Strong. Uh, Twelve Strong. Uh, Twelve Strong wasn't that the? Uh, that was a film with Chris Hemsworth, and he had like a lot of these. Uh, um, yeah, like, like Afghanistan, these, wasn't it, or something? Yeah, I think they, they had like all these guys that they went across with to go the Marines or something. To, yeah, Marines to go and uh, you know do a mission and bit by I guess bit by bit they get picked off kind of uh but yeah this guy he's been in that he's been in Baywatch he's been in uh he's actually he was in uh Without Remorse which actually stars Michael B Jordan who we'll talk about mm. later uh, so he's been in a few films maybe he hasn't been the standout guy or the lead in in some of these films I've mentioned but he's a good actor and now he's going to be the new Hellboy long wow. story short he's going to be the new Hellboy they're picking him because they feel he's a more He's a more diverse actor. He's yeah. uh, he's a bit less known, so they've got more sort of space to to you know to, I guess, explore with him. He's not typecasting one type of thing. So this Hellboy can be a bit of a different type of Hellboy that we've right. seen, we've seen already. You know, Ron Perlman was very Ron Perlman, and I think uh, uh, Stranger Things guy, what's his name again? David, David Harbour was kind of like, kind of like a Ron Perlman kind of. Mm. copy and paste but obviously he wasn't so this guy is going to be very different you know so we'll see when it's yeah. going to it's going to come out i think next year but is yeah. del toro do you know if del toro is still involved i don't know yet i don't know i haven't got those details yet when i get those details i will let you know this is really the early stages of what's happening with hellboy yeah so uh, this mm. guy this guy jack casey he um I didn't know this, but he's he's been in Deadpool too. He played a, a villain yeah. called uh, yeah. Black Tom Cassidy. Yeah, he yeah he was a guy that he was I in don't prison. Even remember Deadpool. that? He had the dreadlocks. He was a guy in prison. Uh, he was oh. kind of pick, picking on picking on Deadpool and picking on the New Zealand guy. Yeah, uh, and I think this this guy, I think he he died in the prison fights. I think he I think he died in the prison fight. Okay. But, uh, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Well, we'll keep kind of our eyes on that one. Uh, We'll kind of let you know how that one pans out. Um, Now, this one, Deval, this is pretty big news because there's been a lot of kind of to and fro. Is it going to happen? Is it not going to happen? Is it going to be a TV show? But I mean, you're here to tell us that Deval, what's got something's going on in Budapest. It's a lot like Budapest. <laughs> <laughs> what did they say again? It's like, it's like this reminds me of Budapest. Oh, Budapest. Yeah, and then we get to see what happened in Budapest. Yeah. yeah. My, what's it say again? Uh, my memory of Budapest is it's, oh, it's completely different line. to your memory. I used to know the line of, I used to know the line of Avengers, all, all the lines off my heart. <laughs> and that was one of my favorite ones. That was Hawkeye and Black Widow shooting, isn't it? 
<laughs> it reminds me of Budapest. Oh, I've got to remember that line. I thought, I thought it was no, that from the game. You, forgot, you don't do the other one. Remember, the sun's coming down, big guy. No, what was it? What was it? Sun's getting real low, big guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's Ultron, isn't it? Yeah. Remember, remember uh, Shakespeare in the park? Remember oh, uh, Loki man. and Thor in the park? In uh, Man, do you know what? There's I've got to watch all those films again because this, oh, this Marvel now isn't what it used to be. So, <laughs> no, yeah. no. Anyway, we digress. Yeah, we're Go talking on. about Alien. So, 20th Century Studio or 20th Century Fox, as it was known, was yeah. bought by Disney. So yeah. now it's called 20th Century Studio. So Disney has the rights to all those Fox catalogs, which include mm. Aliens, Ridley Scott's Baby from 1979. Wow. There's going to be a new Alien movie. The last one was Alien Covenant in 2016. Yeah. And then this one's going to be coming out uh, next year. And this one's going to start filming now, imminently. Mm. It's going to start filming in Budapest. Uh, and uh, this one is going to be quite different. It's going to be quite different. <sighs> when I say different, I probably mean it's going to be worse than what we've seen before. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? Control your expectations, man. Yeah. Oh, I, know. I don't know. But yeah, it's going to start filming. This one's going to star uh, Kaylee Spayeni. Mm. Kaylee Spayeni was in The Mayor of East Town, which was a drama. Uh, also going to be joined British by. Drama. Yeah, yeah, I think it was actually. Yeah, I think it was. This yeah. is going to be joined by David Johnson. Industry, industry is a really good show. Industry is a really good show, mm. British show, but has some American twist to it about uh, stock market, young youngsters in the stock market, and all the craziness that happens. Really good show. Uh, and then also got uh, Isabella Marced, uh, who's in Rosaline. We got Spike Firm, who was in the Batman. Not sure what they played, who they played yeah. in the Batman. So this is a new but, cast, new fresh new kind cast, of faces. Yeah, that, Directed by Fede Alvarez, uh, that, who directed Evil Dead. Well. Yep, that's it. Evil, Evil Dead 2013, The Girl in the Spider's Web, Don't Breathe. So good at that kind of mm. horror, lurking, atmospheric kind of fear. Exactly, you got it. So, yeah, this is coming out next year. So, all I can tell you right now is started filming in Budapest. So, Budapest, you can. Uh, you can imagine is quite gothic maybe in certain yeah, areas, and whether is. they use external or internal shots a lot, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, maybe you can t- kind of trying to visualize, you know, that kind of mm-hmm. scenery with aliens. So we'll see what happens. You know, my expectations are low, but I hope they are exceeded. Yeah, because it's oh, like I said before, there's just been to and fro, and a lot of people love those original. I mean, Aliens, man, what a sequel! James Cameron, let's rock. <sighs> Even the noise of the guns, man. I know. I mean, Oh man, Vasquez. 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 Vasquez, man. Ah, she was great, man. Vasquez. Seriously, honestly, it's such a great movie, such a great sequel. So, if you haven't seen those, please go check out the original first, and then maybe if you want to go um, and check out your Disney Plus uh, for the other ones. Uh, listen, look, we're going to end movie news on a sad note. Uh, actor Tom Sizemore passed away yesterday. Uh, you might remember him from Saving Private Ryan, from Natural Born Killers, from Heat, kind of this... Um, and I remember he was, at some point, Deval, he was kind of like... Oh, he was always there in a lot of these kind of big movies and always kind of brought weight to kind of like the characters. And then I remember he did... Um, I'm pretty sure he did some sort of reality TV show in the UK like Big Brother or something like that. I, I, pretty, Celebrity Big Brother, maybe? I think he did I something think he like right, that. You know? I there think you could be right. There was a point in his life where it, kind of the shit hit the fan and he was getting mm. involved in kind of like drink drugs and all that sort of stuff. Mm. But we, we can't deny the fact that he was in these such great movies. And um, apparently uh, his family uh, have just said that he was hosp- hospitalized after suffering a brain aneurysm. This was in mid-February and uh, he basically never recovered. So, a, so it's quick that's a quick uh turnaround of you know events because you don't really yeah that's that's not like a long-term illness is it it's a quick oh, thing man. so really shocking for your friends and family yeah yeah exactly so he's been around remember yeah true romance natural Born killers strange days a lot of these kind of movies um but yeah you know like you mentioned um you know, before we started filming, it was the kind of oh, saving was... Private Ryan, who's the guy that was collecting the dust. Remember, the, every, everywhere they went, he was collecting the dust and putting it in his bag. And I was like, "What's this guy doing? 
But yeah, that, that's what I remember him for from the most. Exactly. So yeah, RIP Tom Sizemore. Um, all right, Devaldo, let's do new on streaming. Now we've got a couple of great shows that we want to speak about. So the first one is The Last of Us. Mm. And episode seven was kind of, you know, the one thing that I like about the show is, is because they, they take you down these different kind of uh, the pacing of the show kind of like changes. So in this week's episode, it was kind of really intimate, you know, uh, Ellie yeah, and this intimate. other, yeah. uh, the, you know, this other character, which we haven't seen before. And um, we kind of figure out what, it's just kind of like another chapter in Ellie's life, you know, before she, her and Joel met up, this is kind of something that happened in her life before. And it's just kind of really, really interesting. It's like, it's, you know, slow burner. You watch these two interact with each other. I've got to say one thing, man, Ellie, um, what's her name? Ramsey. Is it what, what what's her name? Again? Bella Ramsey. Bella she's, Ramsey. You know what? She's a, she's really good. She's a really good actress. She's really, really good. Um, and um, the way that she kind of, her emotions, the way that she emotes and the way that she kind of says a lot just without even saying stuff. Mm. I thought, man, she's really, really good. And um, both the characters were were phenomenal, really. And they kind of brought this kind of touching moment, you know, uh, friendship, love, you know, things that are unsaid. Yeah. Uh, and then it kind of all ends in tragedy, basically. Yeah, and Storm Reed as well, who's the the girl that she was acting alongside with, uh, who's a friend from, from this this was this was a this was a uh, what's it called again? A flashback. Flashback. So yeah, this was a yeah. flashback, isn't it? And, and yeah, it shows how she, well, yeah, how she got bit bitten, and mm. just it just showed a lot of uh, of why she is how she is. But you're right; it was a real. Like, this reminded me of the. The third episode, the same sex couple. Yes. It reminded me of that, but not so mature. This yeah. is very, very sort of adolescent age and rebellious age and how young people get together and how they communicate or not communicate their feelings and just how they interact. And it was like, yeah, you, for a moment for a few moments you forgot the world that we're in. Yeah. You know, we're in the end of the world, but for a brief moment they were playing game, Mortal Kombat. What I mean, Mortal Kombat Kombat was on there. they weren't yeah. born when that game was out. I mean, we know the game because we yeah, were around we when the game it. was out. Yeah. But you know, these people weren't born. They they how did they know about Mortal Kombat? It's crazy. Mad. It's mad. It was a good episode, and just their their relationship and how they, yeah, just how they connected was a really good two really good uh, actresses. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, at the top of the at the top of their game, but at the early stages of their career. I know. You think about it. it just makes 20 you think. Twenty years old, nineteen years old in real life, they're young. I'm just waiting Ooh. for the plane to go by, by the way. Let just it go, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> just let this plane go. Um, <laughs> so, but yeah, man, absolutely spot on what you just said. Mm. And we didn't really get, there was no Joe. There was no Joel, sorry. There was no just kind of like, you know, yeah. obviously he's going through like something at the moment. And then it was, uh, she stops for a moment and then it's that flashback. And then she come, we come, we do come back mm. to Joel and everything like that. So yeah. obviously nothing's going to happen to Joel, mm. but it's you know it's nice to know that she she didn't abandon him yeah, when he yeah, did yeah. say go yeah. yeah good episode i'm looking forward to the the last couple, couple. Or three or whatever it is i'm looking forward to it man oh, honestly man. if you haven't seen last of us go watch it now yeah, go watch exactly. it now and then um pedro pascal uh obviously playing joel on last of us and a host of mm. other things that he's doing he's also on the mandalorian which kicked off on wednesday the first of march so this oh, was man. just a few days ago oh man Can I say double one thing? paycheck Get that double that paycheck. i really liked it as an opening first episode uh yeah. there were some kind of comments that i read online they were saying oh it's not it's not the same anymore and there's something off about it but you know what i thought as yeah. a first initial episode mm. Man, that opening scene was kind of as big as they come. Don't listen to them. Don't listen to those people. Some people, yeah. just, it's, it's never enough for them. Don't listen it, to them. Exactly. This is what never I don't enough. get. The opening scene for, you know, the third ep uh, third season, first episode of The mm. Mandalorian is called The Apostate. Mm. I mean, it's bombastic. It's got like a massive battle scene. It's yeah. got some creature <laughs> that's coming the out of the Graphics are goon. movie level graphics. The graphics exactly. are wicked. Yeah, I know. Yeah, listen, you know, it's good. It's good. It's Mando good. just comes along and he saves the day yeah. and everything like that. I thought that was really, really good. You know, I thought that was him when he was young. 
They I tricked it was a flashback. They tricked me. Oh, you see? Don't listen to these people. Do you know what? Go watch the show, man. Yeah. I ain't got it's time for these people. The show, really... the show doesn't even need to do anything really crazy. The show just needs to be more the same because the show, the show is so good. It doesn't need to, like, doesn't need to try. Well, yes, it needs, it needs to try hard. But if you know, what I'm, what I'm trying to say is just give us more of the same. I'm happy yeah. with that. I know, it's much I know. better than what we're getting. <laughs> so... Trust me, trust me. Andor and Mandalorian, they've been the stand-up yeah. shows yeah. Uh, yeah. for me yeah. on um, yeah. with the Star, Star Wars. Wars anything Star Wars and films yeah. too. Exactly. Add films into that. But there's a brilliant scene. So we do see Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers comes back again. He's yeah. really great. He's good in this as Apollo well. Apollo Creed. <laughs> Apollo Creed. Um, and um, there's a brilliant scene between him and some pirates. And mm. again, I, I've said this from day one. Mandalorian to me feels like a Western. It's like it's a, a space Western. Western. Man, it's a Western in space. Trust me. Trust me. And that whole thing about, you know, when they go, you know, like, are you ready for this? And then, like, you know, they look in the eyes, the yeah. camera just gives a close up, and then you see the hand kind of going, mm. oh, man, it's brilliant. Go check it out. Mm. That's mm. it. Enough said. That's it. Nothing needs to be said. Um, and Deval, tell us about this one. So this is physical 100. I, now, I've seen this on um, on Netflix. So tell us about this because this yeah. looks interesting. Physical 100. I saw it. Somebody mentioned it uh, and I, I just didn't really pay much attention. I thought, oh, what's this? But this is a Korean uh, like reality show to do with uh, physicality. Mm. So they get 100 of the top athletes, sports people in Korea. Wow. To come on this show and they're tested with different challenges step by step. And basically, if you lose, you're out. So it starts off with 100. And then after one round, it's 50. Then it goes to 25 and, and so on. So bit mm. by bit, people are knocked out. Uh, I've, started, I've I've watched about five episodes so far. The first episode, they were all, they all had to hold on to a ledge. Like a, it's a weird construction. Yeah, like it's, it's safe underneath is water and they fall into the water but they basically got to hold their body up as long as they can oh. and everyone's different sizes you've got big weight build, you know, big guys, uh, bodybuilders yeah. you've got sort of gymnast people you've got UFC people you've got all kinds of people so everyone's holding themselves up some people fall after 10 seconds some other people take ages yeah and that's how they whittle people down and the next one they've got the thing where they got a, there's a ball and after after I think it's two minutes, the person holding the ball is the winner. Is so it? you figure out you figure out what you gotta figure out, but the per the last person holding the ball <laughs> is the winner. That's it. Easy as that. It's because you know when I saw so, the trailer, it was like it reminded me of Squid Game. Yes, yeah, but it's it's not it is a challenge, but it's to, the challenge is more to do with physicality and it's fear. Mm. Squid Game's a bit mad, but it, and this is real, this is reality. Yeah. Reality show. So this is real stuff and lots of the people are famous. I don't know who they are, but they're famous in career yeah, and career stuff. Career and, and stuff, yeah. Yeah, so it's it's a it's an entertaining thing just to watch when you know you don't want you don't want anything too taxing. Nothing yeah. too you know, so it's just light fun. But yeah, it's worth a watch. Go on, go on Netflix right now and give it a try. Physical yeah. one hundred. Physical one hundred, check that one out. All right, let's do trailers and this one sounds interesting. Well, a couple of these sounds interesting. So this one is the blackening. So Deval, what is this? Tell me, is this a comedy horror or something? Or mate, mate, mate. Tell us about this. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm going to read the tagline to you as well. Where is it? I had it. Oh, it's gone. It's gone. It's gone. The blackening. Uh, yep, here it is. The blackening. Yes, yeah, the blackening, yeah? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> the blackening is a horror comedy. Yeah, comedy horror, horror, horror comedy. Uh, and it's black. It's yep. made by black. It's black. all black cast. Okay. It's got uh, Antoinette uh, Robertson. It's got... Uh, uh, Melvin Gregg, who's actually in Snowfall, which I've got to talk about, but maybe next week. Yeah, he's got a whole bunch of uh, black actors that you've probably seen in different things, and really, obviously, really famous in America. Maybe in the UK, other places might not be as famous, but people might yeah. know their fa- might know their faces. Tim Story is a director. Tim Story's that, that director. rings a bell. Fantastic Four, the very mm. first one. Barbershop, uh, Think Like a Man, Taxi with uh, uh, with people with <laughs> Tom um... and Jerry. Uh, Kevin Hart, what now? He's, yes. he's directed a lot of stuff, a lot, a lot of uh, main, mainly sort of black car stuff, really. Mm-hmm. But yeah, this is a horror comedy, uh, and they're all in a house. And the tagline is, "We all can't die first. <laughs> <Can we? laughs> 
<laughs> that's the tagline <laughs> of the film. Because that the whole cast is black. It's horror. Yeah, exactly. You know what horror films do with black people? They make them die first. So in this one, it's like, the film can't be done because they, can't, they all can't die first, can they? So, yeah, this just, look, this looks like, this just, this just looks funny. It uh, just looks funny. That is uh, cool. Uh, it's, I want to check it out. Yvonne, Yvonne Orgy, who was in Insecure, she's in it as well. Mm. Uh, so, yeah, go check it out. It's out soon. Uh, and yeah, that's it really. So it's out in June actually. So it's not out soon. It's out in June. But yeah, this okay. looks really funny. It does. Really funny. It so, does. Yeah, it does. It one. sounds really good. I love it. I love a great tagline from a movie poster. Yeah. You can't we all beat can't them. Die first. We all exactly. can't die first. Yeah, I'm looking at it right now. It looks really good. Um, yeah. So go check out the trailer. I'm definitely going to check out the trailer afterwards. Uh, and the other one, Deval. Let's speak about this. So Peter Pan. Obviously, we've had a few iterations of Peter Pan. Uh, I know that there was a um, a Robin Williams one and. Mm. Yeah, there's been a few about, but t- so yeah. this is Peter Pan and, interestingly, Wendy. Yes. Now, just remind our listeners again, what what is this? This is straight to Disney Plus. So this is this is a Disney Plus movie, uh, Peter Pan, and tells the story of the boy from Never Neverland who can't mm. grow up with all the uh, the lost boys, uh, and yeah, Hook, you know, is being yeah. Hook. Uh, Hook is going to be played by uh, Jude Law. Okay, uh, right. Be Hook. Yeah, he's the notable name in the cast list. Uh, other actors, but maybe some actors you, you may not have heard of. Alan uh, Tudyk. Tudyk oh, yeah, it. Alan Tudyk's in it, yeah. And Molly yeah. Parker, who was in House of Cards. But yeah, yeah. so Peter Pan and, and Wendy, you, you have to mention that because this is the title of the movie. Mm. So obviously in today's day and age, especially being Disney, Disney is very, very, very inclusive. Busy, isn't it? Inclusive, yeah. And... Uh, you know, they can't just have it called Peter Pan. They have to call it, call it Wendy as well, because otherwise it might be too too male dominated. Mm. So uh, yeah, so we'll see what happens to that one. I'm not going to watch it. I'm just reporting yeah. <laughs> of it. I'm not going to watch it just because I'm not really fussed with Peter Pan. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> I'll be honest. Uh, I mean, I mean, if I'm being, listen, look, we we are we try and watch as many programs and TV film yeah. like films as much as possible, and then we obviously got to prioritize stuff and and. Gats we, we gats them, man. We, we, you know, our time is precious. So, uh, yeah, we, we're letting you know about it. It's on yeah. Disney. And you know what would be really great? If someone does see it, who's watching this on YouTube mm. or listening to us, uh, write into it. Uh, yeah, think. let us know. Give us your, um, give us your review and we can, we can talk about it. Uh, so there you have it, folks. Uh, that are, those are the new trailers. Now on Anniversary Corner, we've got a movie that we've pulled out from the bag from 10 years ago, 2013. 42. Devaldo. 42. That's how old I was until a few <laughs> months ago. <laughs> months, mate. For me, a few years ago, mate. A few years ago. <laughs> 42 is 2013, 10 years old, starring the late, great Chadwick Boseman, who stars mm. as, uh, so it's a biopic of uh, Jackie Robinson, who yep. was the first African-American uh, baseball player uh, in the 1940s, yep. 1947. Uh, to, in, to play in a major, uh, major baseball league, so major, major league baseball, at a time when you know maybe it wasn't, maybe at a time when it wasn't something that uh, happened a lot. So no. he has, obviously had to face a lot of discrimination and lots of barriers uh, just to be able to play. And it turned out that he was one of the best players. So mm-hmm. you know, obviously, uh, people maybe didn't want him, but they needed him. <laughs> you, yeah. know, you know, you know how that goes. Oh man. Uh, so yeah, so that's the that's that's uh, this this film I think is actually on. Uh, I think it's on Amazon. I think is it's on it? Amazon. Okay, yeah. that's good. Uh, number forty. I mean, forty-two is the number that he wore on his jersey. That's why the film is called Forty-Two. But this is a really worthwhile film watching mm. to see Chadwick Boseman's work. Some people have just seen him in Black Panther, but he's got a really good catalogue of movies that you know needs to be seen. So oh, yeah, go man. check that out. Absolutely, yeah. definitely. And, and if you want to watch something else of his, Ma Rainey's uh, Black Bottom was oh, yeah, another yeah, one. Yeah, 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 He's yeah, really yeah, good in that yeah, as well. Yeah. Uh, Viola Davis too, yeah. Great Exactly. Film. So yeah, rest yeah. in peace, man. All right, okay. Uh, so go check that out. All right, let's get into film reviews. And yeah, so we've been waiting. A, I've been waiting a while for this one because um, a couple of things. First of all, it's, you know, it's creed but in the whole kind of rocky universe also because michael b jordan's directorial debut and i was really interested to kind of see kind of how all that pans out but also jonathan majors who we've already seen just recently in um 
Quantumania, Ant Man and the Wasp yeah. Quantumania. So I just kind of wanted to see kind of I, I already know he's talented. I, I just wanted to kind of see another role for him to sink his teeth into. So this came out, this was released very, very recently. Deval and I went out and watched this. And um so yeah, so Deval, I'm gonna let you start off start things off first. This what I must say is, uh, I mean, just like the, the film we just mentioned, an anniversary corner. This is another sports film. Mm. Uh, great cast. Uh, anytime I watch a Creed movie, it makes me feel unworthy. <laughs> it makes me want to go to the gym, gym straight away and sort my life out. Because one thing I'll just start off by saying is, Michael B. Jordan it, oh, and, man. and Jonathan Majors, their bodies are. Banging. Matt, I keep uh, saying this. I, I just absolutely. keep saying it. Their bodies are banging. I know his name is actors. Adonis. That's a Greek god. Exactly. Exactly. I, I know they're actors and you know personal trainers, all that kind of stuff. But still, you still got to put in the work. And mm. I don't know what supplements they use or whatever they do to get it oh, done. Man, they I get it done. Their bodies look banging. Let's start off with that. Yeah. But yeah, directorial debut of Michael B. Jordan. Obviously, he's the main star. Tessa Thompson. You've got Jonathan Majors. He's he's in it as his uh, sort of old school friend from back in the day. Uh, you've got Wood Harris, who's his sort of trainer. Again, yeah. there's the wire links there. The wire link, yeah. Jordan and was in the, the wire. Wood Harris was in the wire as well. You've got Felicia Rashad from The Cosby Show. So, you know, that's his mum in the show. Mm. Again, we see Florian Montenegro. Yeah, uh, Drago's son. Victor Drago, yeah, Drago's son. So, again, I, I like something about him I like. I think he needs his own spin-off because he's, he's another beast. He's yeah. probably banging too. Oh, Love a beast. Massive. You've got Tony Be- Bellew, the actual boxer. Who's the actual boxer, now, British, yeah. He shows up in the film as well. Scouser. But yeah, this film sort of, it starts off, uh, you know, uh, Creed is retired. Uh, and he's, his life after boxing, a bit like how some boxers do, they go into promoting, don't they? Mm. They understand the game and they promote and they still use their name and their experience and stuff like that. So he's now been a promoter to promote other boxes, other boxers. Uh, but then the film takes us back into flashbacks of when he was young on the streets and stuff. And he had a friend who's played by Jonathan Majors. And uh, in protecting Michael B. Jordan's character, Adonis, Jonathan Majors' character, done something he shouldn't have done and went to prison for 18 years. And in those 18 years, Michael B. Jordan's Adonis has, you know, we've seen what he's done. He's a you know, superstar now. He's advertising for this and that. He's multi-millionaire, successful boxer. And Jonathan Major's character has been in prison watching that happen. So he's been resenting that. Uh, Michael B. Jordan didn't write to him, didn't contact him. So all of that is resentment, hate, anger. And obviously Michael B. Jordan has been working out like crazy in prison, (laughs) waiting to come out. And because he was a boxer back in the day, he was a great boxer back in the day. Didn't get a chance gloves, to be, yeah. Exactly. Didn't get a, ch- a chance to be a pro because he went to prison, but he was on the way to being it and then it stopped. So he wanted that. He still wants to be a pro and still wants to be a champion. So when he comes out of prison, he, he looks up Michael B. Jordan and they, they see each other and he's like, shit, it's you kind of thing. And, mm. and Michael B. Jordan's a bit hesitant because obviously it brings back memories and Adonis is just a bit of a wily character. Yeah. And a bit subdued, but at the same time, you know he's got a lot going on and he says, yeah, I want to box again. So Michael B. Jordan helps him out and says, yep, I can, you know, sort you out. And he sort of starts on his path to do some sort of amateur boxing or just get back mm-hmm. in the ring and spar with boxers that Michael B. Jordan is trying to get into big fights. Yeah. That's where that's, that's the sort of premise of what's happening so far. And that's where we're at. Obviously, Tessa, Tessa Thompson's in it. Uh, still, they've got a daughter as well who's uh, deaf, uh, who's yeah. born deaf. So Amara. There's, there's Amara, nice name, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I thought of you in that name. <laughs> exactly, man. And I just got, I got to preface this by saying we, because Amara was before, born before that, before uh, Creed Two yes. came out. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, I know. Yeah. So you, you had it first. We man. had you it first, this. man. Oh, come on. Yeah, but no, go on, go on. Amara. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, so yeah, so that, that's 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 where things are set, uh, and. This is where the sort of conflict comes into it now because, you know, uh, I don't want to spoil little things that are nice in the film because yeah. there's some little things that uh, uh, Jonathan Major, I keep saying Jonathan Major's character, what's his name again? Damien. Damien, Damien Jonathan Dame, Major's Dame, character. Yeah. yeah. Still, some things he does that lets you know that he's got beef yeah. with with uh, Michael, B. Rich, Michael B. Jordan's character. He's got beef and he's not just 
he's not just a bit of animosity. He's he's going out his way to do stuff. Yeah, and he does stuff that isn't right. You know, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> you know what? And and it, it just makes me think about it. Imagine that, right? You get locked up. You go away for eighteen years. Mm. That is one mm. long stretch, mm. and a you're lifetime. seeing you're seeing the kid that you grew up mm. with who then goes on to become like this massive superstar, you're going to feel some sort of resentment. So yeah. I, I thought that was really, really good. Yeah. Like, you know, this guy, how he comes along and he's like, we don't know what his game is, but he's definitely got an agenda there somewhere. And he, he weaves his way into the whole thing. Now, here's my thing. Here's my thing with the whole thing. So whilst I was watching the movie, right, I thought, this is amazing. Exactly what you said. Like, you know, um, Adonis, you know, he's... Mm -hmm. For a, this Rocky, this Creed three was kind of like a Rocky four moment where you know in Rocky four Sylvester Stallone had he'd retired from from boxing and this was that kind of a moment for me as well where oh he's retired he's done his thing he just wants to chill out and and whatnot mm -hmm. but then I thought there's going to be one more fight that he has mm -hmm. to do so they kind of had to kind of like you know bring that all in there right so I thought okay we're going to go down that route. Um, one thing that I didn't get was was just how fast, how quick, he got into shape. How fast he got into shape, and how he <laughs> kept into shape. And yeah. not only that, he was given a title shot just like so quick, man. I'm like, would this really Wait, happen in real life? You mean, uh, Damien, 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 how yeah, the hell know, did he get know, a title know, shot out of nowhere? Out of and, nowhere. Uh, yeah, I know that was that was definitely for the film. That that doesn't happen. You no. have to come out of prison and then straight away you're just a title shot. Like just no fights, nothing in between, not even, not even like nothing. a warm-up fight, Still. nothing. Yeah. nothing that so was very much the film yeah that was yeah that was all kind of a thing like that and then the other thing that i would just say is no joke right um this is called creed this is yeah. michael b jordan's movie and they had to get away from rocky yeah. like you know yeah. th this isn't rocky's story anymore right so uh, and even though sylvester stallone has got his kind of footprint uh you know throughout the whole of the rocky franchise and everything even the first one and two which are great and everything there is nothing that links to 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 rocky balboa mm -hmm. apart from one line apart from one thing yeah. where they mention about the fight that they had yeah. apollo yeah. creed and and yeah. like rocky yeah. and stuff like that which i thought was really interesting and pretty bold i thought is there going to be a moment where you know, the, the Rocky, somehow I just thought maybe Rocky's going to turn up. But then when you start okay. reading about what happened, Deval. Yeah, beef, in it? Yeah. Beef outside of the movie, like behind the movie, mm. which I thought was kind of like interesting. Mm. But, um, but I'll, I'll, I'll ask you a question. Who yeah. did uh, Jonathan Majors' character remind you of when he was in the, in the ring boxing? When he like was doing Rocky? Things. Nah, Jonathan Majors' character. When he was in the ring fighting, oh. I think the first oh. guy. Who did he remind you of with his black shorts and the way he was moving and like very oh, unorthodox style? Uh, Mr. T. No, 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 no. no. A real, real boxer. A real oh, boxer. Real boxer. All right, let me see. Oh, Tyson. Real... Yes. Yes. He, the black shorts, the, the sort of, the, the no socks. I think he had no socks and he was he kept doing this. And that's, what, that's and... what Tyson would do. Exactly. He was just moving. I was like, do you know what? I'm, I'm watching Tyson. Like, exactly. I mean, even, even his haircut with a little line kind of thing. Um, I'm like, hold on, this is Tyson. Like, you know, this... he looked menacing. Do you know that? Oh, my gosh. My, uh, Jonathan Majors, the training, obviously, man, the, what they do. And obviously, you're absolutely right about kind of they get the best supplements. They get the best kind yeah. of like trainers and stuff like that, right? But come still, on, man. Still, How do still. you sculpt your yeah. body? You know, Michael B. Jordan from The Wire. The guy was skinny. Oh, God. Yeah. Trust me. He, this guy had like a thin Even frame. Fantastic Four. Fantastic Four, I'd say That's as where well. he beefed up, right? Yeah. Yeah. From there. But the acting as well. I would say, that obviously, the, we're talking about the bodies and the physicality. Yeah. This actually, this was a good old school Hollywood film of two people that have got an issue and I've got to fight it out. Yeah, and there wasn't, there out. wasn't, I didn't see much like, pandering and lots of PC-ness or whatever. Mm. It was just, it was just dealt with, like, the film was just the film. Mm. It reminded me a bit of of, uh, of of Top Gun Maverick where there's an issue 
this film's going to sort it out and then we're yeah. going to go home afterwards. It wasn't, there wasn't much like politics involved or anything. It just kept the film nice. Yeah. Do you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, no, no, no and absolutely. And she dealt with it, like the acting from Tessa Thompson, the child, and everyone had their part to play. There wasn't like, there was just not too much spoon feeding. And, and there was a couple of, you know, Michael B. Jordan, do you know what? There's a couple of bits that reminded me of Black Panther. And I know the bits you're, you're, you're once I say it, you're going to be like, oh, yeah, you're right. But uh, there was, and really artistic, the fight between. The fight, see, the cage. Oh Man. my gosh! The, the, the I was gonna the say they're fighting. The crowd is there, and then they almost come out of the crowd. And see how in Black Panther, when you go into the the, the you take the, the heart shaped herb, and you go yes. into the other, it's like the, the crowd world. disappeared. They went into a new. There's no music, no people. They were fighting, and that 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 shows you the intensity of when you're mm. fighting someone so so intimately. You block out everything else. Absolutely. And, Cage was there to to represent prison and the fact that like you can't get out. Yeah. That was it's wicked. good artistic. There was some great artistic wicked. kind yeah. of uh, that shots that they kind of did, and um, and there was kind of like um, uh, so what I got from that was so so Adonis is looking back and seeing that younger kid. Mm. You know, they're both seeing the kind of the younger kid there, who they were as they were kids, and they got to end up fighting. There was one look that they both gave each other, which was like, shit, man, we're going to, we have to do this. Like, you know. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. Like, you know, you should be, should be, like, you're my friend, you're my brother. Like, what, what are we doing here? What kind are of we thing? doing? Because yeah, yeah, they yeah, both yeah, have yeah. that kind of, yeah, that yeah, vision from yeah. the past. And I thought that was really, really good. And you know what i got to say? I thought it was, I thought it was going to, be weaker for because the three quills are always kind of like you know the with the sometimes the weakest part in in kind of these movies but i thought you know what a great um uh debut from um mm, mm, uh what's it what's his uh michael b jordan from jordan, adonis yeah, i thought yeah. it's good very good very good i just think that you know it's assured his director was assured there was a lot of close-up shots I think mm. he likes having these close-up yeah. shots and lights. Reminds me of Fruitvale Station, man. He, yeah. th- maybe he got some from that as well. Fruitvale Station had that. I know that's something that uh, uh, Ryan Coogler likes a lot as well, with the floating sort of close-up shots. So maybe and, he, he, he borrowed it off that. And imagine imagine Ryan Coogler being your kind of mentor, mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. you know, the movies that he's made. And I'm pretty sure he would have had conversations with Ryan Coogler, like, look, this is what I'm thinking of doing. And, like, I reckon Ryan Coogler would have helped him shape kind of, like, some ideas as well, which I think is great. I mean, who doesn't need a mentor? Like, and, mm-hmm. you know, if you have someone like Ryan Coogler, bloody hell, you know, why not? Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, man, I, th- I just thought... Uh, there was a part of me was thinking, oh, um, how is this going to go on without Rocky? But yeah, it's going to go on. Uh, where, do you reckon we will we'll get a Creed four though? Because who else can he fight? Yeah, well, I think I, I was thinking maybe there might be a gap, and perhaps Michael B. Jordan will com- continue directing because who else was the d- w- the daughter? Yeah, yeah. The daughter. she might, she might, she might want to fight because she looks like she wants to fight. So and that might be an interesting to one. Make it know? more inclusive now. They will yeah, go down yeah. the female route. Exactly. So, but they, they, but it has to be a gap for her to grow up. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So that could happen in a few years' time. So I reckon, yeah, that could that could happen. Yeah. Maybe. There's mm-hmm. talk of uh, there being a spin-off, a Drago spin-off. Oh, okay. So. um Maybe there could be something like happening with that, mm, and, and okay. like you know. And you mentioned obviously Drago's son and everything, so yeah, it could be could be something that we might be able to see. But yeah, listen, definitely go out and watch it. Um, it's an interesting movie, and uh, seeing Jonathan Majors, I've said it before, I say it again. This guy is going to do some really great and interesting things. I'm really looking forward to his next movie that's going to be coming up. That is called um, Magazine Dreams, where he plays a bodybuilder. <laughs> Yes, well, he's ready made for it, isn't he? Exactly, and mm. it, it was um, it was showcased at Sundance Film Festival just very recently, and he basically got a standing ovation. So I think mm. we're going to see some really kind of interesting um, roles coming from Jonathan Majors, mm. and obviously mm. with Michael B. Jordan. I mean, you know, he's a, he's an action star. Mm. Exactly, sure is. You know, he's an action star, and who's mm. to say we don't see him come back as Killmonger again at some point? Oh. Wish. In um, what if? Oh, that was the best part of Black Panther Two, man. I know. <laughs> best can, part I of the know. Film. 
Man, him, <laughs> Black Panther coming, uh, yeah. Killmonger coming back again. So listen, look, folks, go check it out. Uh, Creed 3, it's out in the local cinemas. And Devaldo, let's do this, right? We've got about another about five minutes left, right? So, um, or do you reckon, or do you want to just cut it short there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead now. Do your one, man. Well, I'm going to be really quick with this one. This is... Oh, we have a ghost and we already spoke about David. <laughs> we already spoke about David Harbour yeah. being Hellboy. Well, he, yeah. he's not Hellboy in this one. He's a ghost in this one. Yeah. And um, it's just super weird. I, I don't yeah. know. I can't put my finger, or my, my, I can't just put my kind of finger on this, but it starts Anthony Mackie. It stars David Harbour as a ghost. It's got mm. Beetlejuice vibes to it. It's got a House on Haunted Hill vibes to it. It's got kind of like a, a whole kind of collection of uh, these, you know, haunted house kind of um, kind of uh, movies that you've seen and they've kind of thrown it in there. So Anthony Mackie, he kind of moves into this uh, house. Uh, state agent is basically trying to get rid of it. They move in because it's cheap on the market. And... Here's the thing, though, Deval. If you moved into a house and on the first day that you moved into the house, you find out that there's a ghost living in your house, what would you do? Like, je- like seriously, 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 seriously. Mate, I'm if you gone. Say- exactly. I'm gone, mate. Gone. <laughs> so listen, that's it. That's the end of the movie. You're gone. You're out, right? But no. The So Anthony Mackie's kid, he... Uh, he sees the ghost. He sees David Harbour. And what does he start doing? He starts laughing. Oh, my God. This starts... is a black man as well, yeah? <laughs> this, is <laughs> right. this, this, is this, right. this film is wrong, yeah? Come on now. <laughs> Anthony Mackie, you be gone, Oh, mate. my gosh. Come Divaldo, on, they start laughing at the ghost. And listen, if that was me, Flipper, you'd be running miles. You'll be out of the house, man. Run, mate. Exactly. So what happens is they start thinking, Anthony Mackie starts thinking, hang on, you know what? We can use this to our advantage. Uh, mm. Let's start making money off of this thing. And you know what? It just goes off into so many weird, um, uh, different ways. But listen, look, underneath all of that stuff, there is this kind of, this kid Anthony Mackie's kid he doesn't kind of fit in mm. he doesn't he has kind of like a, a bit of a strange relationship with Anthony Mackie and um doesn't really connect with him so he's kind of going through some changes and he just wants to belong and he does connect uh, the, and the th- the thing that he does connect with is the ghosts with David Harbour yeah. so they kind of have this kind of relationship he starts helping David Harbour just trying to figure out who the guy is how he died and you know is he here has he got to do something? And I was hoping, I was really, really hoping for this to be a really kind of great movie. But in the end, man, it was just, just felt flat for me. It's more like, I don't know. It just kind of just didn't have, it was not scary. It wasn't even funny. And I I was just put off by the whole thing about them just laughing at the ghosts within the first five minutes. (sighs) So, yeah, I mean, you know, I'm not surprised you said that because I saw the, I think you mentioned it a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. And then I saw it on Netflix. And you know what? It's probably a good film for people that like this sort of thing, really yeah. light entertainment and stuff. And Very comedy. light. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard light be so light. Very light. <laughs> 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 oh, that's the lightest light you can get. That's helium light. Look at it. It's going up light. But uh, yeah, I think for, the, for that kind of audience, it probably matches and fits. But I think we need something a bit more substantial. And, exactly. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not going to watch it. Not in a bad way, but yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, look, if there's a choice, if you, there's, there's loads of other great movies on Netflix that you can watch. Mm. And you can watch like an you know, Oscar contender or yeah. quiet on the Western front, if that's mm. what you want to go for. But yeah, this one, I mean, yeah. like, yeah, uh, probably not, uh, you know. But listen, look, hey-ho, that's it. Uh, that's all we've got time for in this week's episode. Uh, we've tried and kept it light for you. <laughs> but uh, we'll see you on the next one. So, Deval, uh, I think yep. March, the there's a big next movie coming week. up on March the next 9th. Week Shazam. Next week's Shazam. Shazam. Yeah, Shazam. And then after that, we've got... Uh, John Wick. John Wick, or is it... No, I think the week after that, we got... I think it's 65 and then John yes. you know, no, 65 and John Wick, I think it's the same week or something like that. But yeah, yeah. I want to so, yeah. watch that. Yeah. Uh, all right. Okay, folks, uh, you've heard it. 